Hi guys, um, I'm the Adoption Center Manager at OneTL and I'm going to do just a little brief video about um, collars and harnesses and all the good walking gear and stuff that we supply for our fosters um, while they're with us so that, you know, that we can keep them all safe and keep them secure in all their best gear. So first off, every dog is required to be wearing a martingale collar and an ID tag. Um, the martingale means that it has just this little extra loop of fabric. So kind of this is what a traditional, you know, normal collar looks like. This is probably what you're used to seeing. Um, these we don't think of as safe because, you know, if they're not sized absolutely correctly, um, or even if sometimes if they are, they can still slip over the dog's ears. Just if they wiggle just the right way, they can pull right out of them. So we, for all of our dogs, always will use a martingale collar. Um, these come in a variety of sizes. So obviously we got them from itty bitty, like if you have like a tiny teacup chihuahua or something, um, all the way up to the big boys. Um, so for any dog, um, and these are great little Max and Neo ones that even have a locking mechanism, um, but for any dog, they should be on a martingale. Um, and then we'll show it a little bit later, but another great thing about these two is that when you put the leash through the harness and the collar, um, it's not, uh, tightening so much that it's choking them because of this little extra loop of fabric. It's just going to tighten up on that fabric and it's really really safe to use. Um, so if you do not have a martingale, if for some reason your dog is on just a flat buckle collar, maybe they came from a transport and it was, you know, maybe a quick intake or something and it just got missed, let us know because we would like to switch it to um, a martingale because it's much safer. Um, and always make sure you have a one tail ID tag on your dog as well. If the ring comes undone, if you lost it, whatever, let us know so we can get you a new one. All right, and then a good rule of thumb for sizing the martingale is to make sure that it can't go over your dog's ears. So Swayze has a black martingale, probably not ideal for this video, but it's what I've got. Um, so, you know, this is what it looks like. It has that little extra loop of fabric. Come here, Nugget, come here. And then, so I'm gonna put it around his neck. Good boy. And then I'm gonna try to just Dee, dee, dee. Can I get it over his ears? No, I can't. Then that's a good rule of thumb for it being on snug. If he's resisting against it, it's going to <laughs> tighten just like that, um, which is what I want. But I can get a couple of fingers underneath the collar. I know it's not like so snug that it's hurting him in any way. Um, but if I try to, you know, smoosh it over his ears, it's not coming undone. Um, it's not going right over. So that is what you want. Always try to do that after your dog's collar is on. Once you get to know your dog too, of course, don't do this like right away as soon as they get into your home and they're like, what the heck? Um, but after you get to know them a little bit, you know, do that little trick and make sure that that collar is on snug. Okay, now let's talk about the types of leashes that we give out. So um, we always give out four foot or six foot leashes, generally six foot. Um, so just a standard, you know, nylon leash that looks something like this. Um, maybe it doesn't have Halloween print, but you know, normal nylon leash. Um, the other types of leashes that we have are, so this would be like a six foot leash, but has a traffic handle, which just means it has a handle right at that like foot and a half or so mark. So this is um, a really great leash for dogs that are stronger, if they're big pullers, um, if they are reactive, if they lunge at other dogs, maybe lunge at people, um, if they have um, maybe some harder leash behaviors, we will try to set you up with a traffic handle leash. Um, if you have a current foster dog that you think would benefit from a traffic handle, let us know. We don't have a ton of them, so um, we may not be able to give one out to everybody, um, but we do our best to supply them to the dogs that really, really would benefit from a traffic handle leash. Um, another type of leash that we have would be a chain leash. So this is not a choke chain collar, but just a chain leash. Um, so this would be for a dog that bites their leash. Um, so sometimes dogs can get really overly frustrated or overly excited when they're out on a walk and they their first go-to is to kind of start chomping away on that nylon like it's a rope toy. For those dogs, we should put them on a chain leash because dogs can um, chew through their leash in a matter of seconds um, and you really wanna make sure that doesn't happen. Um, 
So if you have a dog that is experiencing some kind of leash biting behavior, let us know and we would swap you to one of these guys. It's not ideal to hold in your hand. I know it kind of hurts. So oftentimes we'll also put, you know, a normal nylon leash with it. Um, and kind of over time, you can start to transition um, back to a nylon leash, but you'd want to chat with your foster coordinator about that. Um, the other, so the last leash that we've got would be um, the leash that goes with the Freedom No Pull harness. So we'll go through the Freedom No Pulls, but I'll just show you kind of what this leash looks like. It is has one handle, but then it has two clips. So there's two clips on the Freedom No Pull that it can attach to. Um, so this um, is ideal for dogs that again are bigger, stronger pullers, where you just want to make sure you have a lot of good, you know, tension on that leash and you can really hold on to them um, well. Um, or if they're reactive, things like that, it can help out a little bit um, and just feel like you have a better grip on, on your dog. Um, you can absolutely use this though as a normal leash. So you get this leash with your foster and you're like, this, you know, makes no sense to me or I just prefer a normal leash that's fine. You can just put both of the clips on the front clip of the Freedom Noble Harness and then just use it like it's a normal leash. Um, these are short, they're about four feet, um, but it's a really great leash, um, you know, for the, for the bigger pups. Okay, and then um, next we'll talk about harnesses. So um, we want every dog to be on a harness um, as well as a collar. Um, it's just a lot more safe for dogs to be on both types of gear. Um, so the harnesses range depending on the size of your dog. It'll range what we give you um, If you've got a small dog say you're fostering a dog that's you know 20 pounds or under um, We'll probably give you a back clip harness. So that just looks something like this You know their arms would come through the front two holes um, The clip is on the back and then you can still put the leash through everything. So say let me grab a little baby martingale Say this is on the dog's collar um their neck and then this is you know their harness you could put the leash attachment through all of those things at once um, and that's what we always recommend for any of our harnesses um for all of the dogs we want the leash attachment to be through the collar and through the harness because that is going to give you the most protection if they try to slink out of it um, or if they pull really hard um, they are really extra in their gear and it'll be harder for them to escape two different pieces of, equi of equipment at once um, if they're just in um, leashed up into their harness or just into their collar you know it's um, a more of a likelihood that they can squeeze out of it so definitely make sure to always put the leash through both things when you're walking your foster all right, so that'd be back clips. Um, the other harnesses that we offer would be front clip harnesses. So for pretty much all the dogs that are like, you know, 30-ish pounds or so and up, um, we supply a front clip harness. So a pretty standard front clip would be an easy walk, which looks like this. Um, when you get it, you might be like, what the heck, how do I use it? But a really great rule of thumb is just to remember to unclip the um, color that is opposite. So there's always gonna be two that are the same, one that is different. If you unclip the one thing that is different, it gets a little bit less confusing. You'll start to realize it's just this big open hole. That is where your dog's head goes through. And then the leash attachment, it goes on their chest. The black piece would go right behind their arms. And then um, there are little tags on here too. Um, so if you um, need to familiarize yourself again, you can look at the shoulder strap, the chest strap, and um, belly strap and kind of figure it out from there too. Um, so then this would be a slightly larger easy walk just to give you an idea. So say it came to you where it was clipped, you know, something like that, and you're like, that looks obviously a lot more confusing. Um, just clip the things that are the same together again. So flowers and flowers, unclip the black, and I promise it'll make a lot more sense. Um, so remember that, and then just remember that it always goes on the front. So same kind of situation as before. So this is on your foster dog, as well as a collar. And then you would just put the leash through both of those things like that. So that the leash is through all of the things at once and your dog can't, um, you know, somehow do a little Houdini out of everything at once. Um, the other type of harness that we have is the Freedom No Pull. So we don't um, give these out to every dog. Um, they are kind of reserved for the dogs that um, are a little bit harder on walks. 
um, that, you know, maybe pull a little bit um, or just are really strong. Um, or if they can kind of get out of the easy walk, sometimes the easy walks sit a little low for some dogs and, you know, this is just a better fitting one. Um, but so these are great harnesses as well. Freedom note pull, the best rule of thumb is whatever the opposite color um, little short piece like this, or here's a larger one to give you an example of a medium size, the silver strap, that means that is what goes on the back. So when you're looking at it, you're like, you know, what the heck, how does this work? The black means that that's the back. So then I know that this is the front. There's a little thing right here. That would be the back. And then the velvet straps are what goes um, beneath the dog's arms. So you would just unclip, unclip. The dog's head goes right through there. This um, singular strap just is their chest strap. So it goes right at their belly. And then you would just clip on both sides. So this same situation, they always, so they have two rings. So it's, you can have a back um, clip or front clip again clip it on the front it'll help you a lot with pulling um, you know if your foster coordinator says like you know back clip would be fine for this dog or if they're just a really you know slow leisurely walker then sure do whatever works best but um, you know good eight times out of ten we're gonna tell you to clip it on the front and that it'll give you a lot more control over your dog so there you go that would be a freedom no pull um, and then a good rule of thumb for sizing harnesses is that you can have, you know, a couple of fingers underneath the strap, but you can't really like move it a whole around a whole lot. So, you know, for any harness, I want to make sure that I can like, you know, get my fingers underneath there, but I'm not like able to get my whole hand and like move it around their body. Um, if it's ever droopy in any way, like if you can like, if it's like sagging off of them, um, or you can see space between like their fur and where the harness is, like there's like inches of space there, it's way too big. Um, it's better to have it on a little too tight than, a, than too loose. So when you're sizing it, if you're a little like, oh, I don't know, I would size it a little bit tighter. Um, because think of it as a fabric, you know, it's going to move around, it's going to, um, you know, get, you know, worn out over time, um, especially if they're a strong puller or pulling towards squirrels or dogs or whatever you've, you know, you've got in your neighborhood. Um, but keep that in mind. So definitely keep it um, on snug and, um, you know, look at it every few days um, and reassess how tight it is if it's still tight enough for your dog. Um, or if you need to tighten it up again. Okay, so now I will show you actually how to put on the Freedom No Pull harness. Um, so that would be the one that has the little bit of velvet strap on the tummy, um, and it has this opposite, you know, different color. This is, in this case, a brighter green that um, shows me that that is the back side of the harness. So my dog is very excited because he knows a harness means a walk. So um, what you're gonna do is grab a treat. So this is just a little Zooks treat. You can use like really anything your dog really loves. Um, if they're more shy or timid or you don't really know them as well, use hot dogs or cheese or something more high value than just a normal dog treat. But so I'm gonna get my dog to come in. And then I'm gonna put my treat right through there. So you can kind of practice this over time too, but just establishing that when it goes over their head, that's when they're getting the food. Um, so you just put that main piece over their head, have some other treats nearby so you can keep rewarding as you're doing everything else. Then that just straight middle piece is what goes right between their arms, like so. And then you gotta take your other hand, so make sure they have some good food at this point. Um, and then just clip both sides. So you can see on my dog, this is a really good fit. So I can get a couple fingers underneath there, but I'm not like able to move it around a whole ton. Um, it's up high on his chest. There's no way his arms are gonna slip out of there. Come here, sweet. Show this side. Come here. Um, and you can see this side. It's like that perfect L shape. That's what you wanna be seeing for the freedom no pull or for the easy walk, is you wanna be able to see that you know perpendicular L, cause that means it's a really good snug fit. So before we go out for a walk, we grab our leash. <laughs> I'm gonna attach it to the harness first. I always like just doing it to the harness first. I feel like it's a better grip. And then I bring down the martingale. So you can see, come here, Spike. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> so you can see I have it on the harness. 
And then I'm gonna reach down, I'm not grabbing the ID tag, that's not the, you know, the piece that I want, but I'm gonna grab the martingale piece. And now you can see that the leash is easily through both of those things. I always just jiggle it a little bit, make sure it's actually in there, not just like, you know, doing one of those things or something like that. But make sure it's really snug and in there. Um, and then you're all set to go on your walk. Good boy. Okay, so the next step is gonna be the easy walk. So that is just um, the more standard, you know, medium harness that we provide most of the time. It has the two same colors, one opposite color. The one opposite color is what should be unclipped. So keep the two colors that are similar together. Come here, sorry. Um, and unclip the opposite color. So same situation, I'm gonna get my dog to stand. I'm gonna put the treat right through the hole. He sees that, I put it over his head, I let go of the treat, and then I reach behind him, get that black strap, um, and then tighten it right at his arm. So the black is right behind his arms, pink is on his chest and on his back. Um, if your dog is uncomfortable with the snap, so, it's something to get used to. You know, not every dog is gonna be like, okay, yes, yeah, snap me into a harness. Um, so it's something to really desensitize. I would do this kind of thing a lot um, before you're even strapping. I would reach under the belly, still treat them, all that good stuff. Um, and then over time, you know, work up to the snap. If they're uncomfortable, you don't have to do it right away. Of course, if you're going on a walk, make sure they're in their gear, but do, you know, work on some training at home to get them comfortable with all of those movements. Um, and then again, this is going to be a good fit for this harness. You see it has that like really good L shape. It's up high on his shoulders. We never want to see this strap like down here, down here. Um, then a dog can just pop their leg right out of it pretty easily. So make sure it's up high on the shoulders whenever you are sizing these. Um, when you're sizing, the best rule of thumb is to, you know, tighten up this back strap the most keep the belly strap a little bit looser um, and then kind of just do it over time. So if I put this on my dog and it was like super tight, I couldn't tighten the belly, what I would do is um, stretch out this black piece just a little bit um, and kind of you know work my way to make sure it's still up high on his shoulders, but that he's in there snug. I can get some fingers underneath, I can get a little bit of movement, but it's not slipping off him in any way. And then, gotta shake it out. Um, and then right before we're going on our walk, I'm going to say sit. I'm going to put the leash right through that harness piece. And then I'm going to bring down the martingale piece and click them through. Jiggle it a little bit. Make sure it's really in there. And we are good to go on our walk. <laughs> um, other walking gear we don't use as much, but it's still accessible if you feel like your foster would benefit from um, either a gentle leader or a head halty or something like that, chat with your foster coordinator and we can start talking about deconditioning them to something like that. Um, if your foster obviously is on a muzzle, you want to make sure that they're always um, walking with their muzzle whenever they're on walks as well. Um, walking gear is specific to the dog that you're fostering. It's not always going to be the exact same stuff, um, but without a doubt, um, you're always gonna have a martingale, you're always gonna have an ID tag, and you're always gonna have a harness of some sort and a leash, of course. Um, so if you are ever you know, feeling like you don't have the right gear, then reach out to us so that we can prov provide you with the right gear. Um, do not leave the harness on your dog unless they're on a walk. So as soon as they come back in from the walk, the harness should come off and it should go in a space that they can't reach it. So if you put it right on the counter ledge and they you know, see it and grab it and think it's fun to chew on, that's a big bummer for us because um, they're not ex or they're not <laughs> inexpensive, they're expensive for us. Um, so we want to make sure that we're not resupplying fosters with two or three or four different harnesses. Definitely put it in a not easy to reach spot and don't leave it on your dog because um, it becomes a little chewing target and you know we don't want that to happen. All right, that's it. So if you have any questions about um, collars or harnesses, um, reach out to your foster coordinator so that they can help you out and um, we'll kind of go from there. Thank you.